Hey guys, as always, thanks for watching. Um, I've been in contact with my uh, good friend from Japan. Uh, he sent me over some information and uh, tips and tricks um, when it comes to making your own lures. And uh, I've been practicing a little bit. I've been uh, trying to figure out how it all works. And today we're doing a video on how to make your own stick bait for um, dock tooth, bluefin, GT, and if you're lucky, Napoleon. Um, so we're starting off with uh, two pieces of wood, slightly super glued together. Um, this is polonia wood. It's kind of hard to come by, but it's a uh, really great wood to work with. It's quite light, just a bit slightly heavier than um, balsa wood. Works really great. Um, so as you can see, I've made a bit of a sketch on the, the two pieces that are glued together. And um, here I've carved the outlinings out. I don't unfortunately have the luxury of having a bandsaw. So, um, I mean, it's, it's good wood to work with anyway, so it doesn't take up a whole lot of time. So um, that's the first dimension cut. Obviously, uh, we've got a couple more to go. So here we continue on to the next side of the cut, which is um, going to be the side cut. As you can see, I've made a drawing on the top, um, which kind of helps me guide which lines I have to follow. I just fold the piece of paper in half so that, and cut it out so that it's uh, symmetrical on both sides. Makes it easy. Now, you'll be seeing plenty of fast forward footage in this uh, video because there's a lot of tedious work involved if you don't have uh, the machines and, or tools at hand. But um, yeah, if you're lucky enough to have it, it will cost you a lot less time. So when you're carving, you want to also make sure that uh, you stay pretty symmetrical um, the whole time so here we it's starting to look like um, the shape that we were aiming for we've got a bit more carving to go but we're getting pretty close Now that's kind of the shape that we're uh, going for, so I've started off with um, 80 grit sandpaper to get all the rough edges smoothed out, and then later on we'll continue on with uh, 320 grit sandpaper. That's already looking pretty smooth, but the the wood does retain the, the, the rough scratches from the 80 grit, so we'll have to smooth it out further with the 320. And that is what we're looking for. It's nice and smooth. We double check if we missed any spots that have got like little bumps in them or any um, any parts that are not symmetrical. Just keep a good eye out for that. And then, um, when you double check everything, you're ready to go on to the next step. Now the next step is very much optional. I've done it just because. I like the, the look of the bait, how it turns out, but I'm here I'm drawing an, a face outline that I'll later be carving. Um, it's definitely optional to make a good lure. It doesn't have to have a, a face carving or any carving whatsoever. Uh, it doesn't really need any color either, as long as they're well balanced, they cast well, and uh, they swim. They do what they're supposed to do. The look is uh, not very important whatsoever. Now I'm just freehanding this, I don't want to use any stencils, 
Uh, I've only done it just to show you that you can do it, um, that you don't have to be too um, finicky about it. But um, yeah, just wanted to show you guys that it is uh, an optional thing you can do. Obviously you have to do both sides and it's a bit tricky if you don't use any stencils. Um, but you can sort of line them up. Uh, one trick that I uh, like to do is uh, when, when you have 3D eyes, you can stick them onto the wood and then look at them from a top view and from a front view to see if they line up. And if so, you can draw a circle around them so you know where to cut to fit the 3D eyes. The, that's probably one of the most uh, accurate ways to do it um, if you don't have a stencil. If you do have a stencil, well, good on you. So here I'm doing the first carve lines. Uh, I'm just using a Stanley knife here. Um, I just followed the lines first. And then later on, we're going in with a, a little razor blade and um, the Stanley knife again to make a, a shallow side cut towards uh, the deep line cuts. So that's when we carve out the gill plates. Looks a bit more realistic, more like a, a real lure that you'd find in the shop. Again, this is definitely not necessary, it's just optional. It doesn't make it a better lure or anything. Um, probably only costs more time, but it is kind of rewarding when it turns out nice and yeah, it's just nice to have. So obviously we have to do the same carving on the other side. I know it's a bit tedious, but um, we're just doing the whole thing just to give you an idea of uh, the type of work that is involved to actually um, get those details in there. So now the carving is done and I'm sanding the, the calf cuts with uh, 320 grid to make them nice and smooth. That's when it starts looking more and more like a, a real stick bait. Now here we're splitting the two pieces apart. Um, we're doing this so that we can fit in the weights and the internal wiring. You wanna, if you wanna be really accurate, you wanna weigh these in on a on a very accurate uh, scale, um, which I did, and they were very very close. Um, so here's the internal wire that we use. This is 2.2 millimeters galvanized uh, stainless steel wire. Now this I know looks very amateuristic and I'm just using a screw here to create the uh, nose eye of the lure. Uh, some of the pros might be laughing their ass off here at the moment, but um, either way, it's one way you can do it if you don't have the tools. Now for these poppers and stick baits you want to be using heavy gauge wire. Um, the fish that you're targeting, any any form of weakness is uh, going to be punished severely. Now this might not be the strongest way to do it. I think that the proper way to do it is just to weld it. I will re reinforce it with some um, line that uh, will be soaked in super glue to hold the whole thing together. And, um, but it, it's not the best way to do it, I know that, but this is just for the sake of showing how to make an internal wire.
So I've made a bit of a drawing on the inside of the one of the lure halves to um, point out uh, where the, the hook hanger on the belly is got to go um, and so where I've got to curve the wire down to make the, the hook hanger on the belly. That just helps with uh, getting it all proportional to how exactly you want it and that it fits the lure obviously. There's a little bit of iffy work involved, but if you get it right, you can you can play around with the wire a little bit, bend it in a different way so that it fits better. Um, it's quite forgiving, so. So there we are, there we have the, the belly hook hanger. Um, just want to make sure that you get your wire as straight as possible so it will have the neatest fit inside the lure. So I mean, a couple of kinks is not too bad as long as it doesn't um, affect the positioning of the two halves too much. Um, so here we got the finished off product once I've tied the, the line around it soaked it in super glue it hardens up really well and um, just adds a bit of extra strength also when we glue the two halves together um, it uh, sticks to the wood a lot better it makes it a lot stronger again this is probably not the the best way to do it but it's um, just it's it's for the sole purpose of showing you guys um, how to make the internal wire and how to make it fit so that's looking all smooth it's looking real good, so the wiring is done. Uh, now we're just going to make a fitting for the weights. Uh, make sure that uh, they are positioned well and that we can uh, close the two halves together off. So I've weighted the, this uh, lure in a way that uh, I'd like it to be. Obviously, you can have your sinking stick baits, your floating, your suspending. Um, you just have to kind of do the math on that one. Um, look at the what 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 the volume of the wood is that you're using, and the the weight of the wire and the um, sinkers that you're using, and what what you need. Um, I've used the Dremel here to create the, the gaps uh, for the singers and they fit well. Um, now what I'm doing here is uh, I've collected some sawdust from the sanding that I've done before. And um, what I'm doing is I'm putting it over some of the wiring in the sinkers. Uh, we'll be using a lot of super glue and if you pu if you put super glue onto sawdust it will completely harden up it will help with uh, the two halves sticking together even better now when it comes to super glue um, on super gluing these halves together i think the, the one thing that i can give you is that uh, it's impossible to use too much and it's um, uh, better to use too much than uh, not enough is the stuff that holds the bait together so I'm going through about two and a half tubes I believe here it might just be two 
And um, when you put the two halves together, make sure that you've got everything lined up before you completely drop it and press it together because if you're a millimeter off, then it kind of might mess up. But uh, that super glue is already sticking uh, both sides together, so that'd be unfortunate. Make sure everything lines up properly. I damaged the wood in the process, unfortunately, but that can happen. Now I found a couple of points where there might be some gaps in the wood which I wanted to close off so I put some sawdust in there and um, put some super glue in there to fix up the gaps. You can do that around um, the nose of the lure, the back of the lure and um, yeah, where the belly hook hanger is as well. Better be safe than sorry. Now after sanding the um, super glued gaps, um, I just wanted to give it some color, give it some shading. I don't have an airbrush, uh, so I just used an old permanent marker. Um, again, don't necessarily need color or anything, but it's kind of fun to let your creativity take over and um, see what comes out of it. Alright, so quick update. As you can see, we've added some color. Uh, we've done two coats of marine grate polyurethane and we've stuck some eyes in there, so it's looking real good right now. It's ready to go into the epoxy. Um, I didn't have any of the, the turning holders that does a equal distribution of, uh, well, whether that's the polyurethane coating or um, epoxy coating. Uh, so instead, what I did is I dipped the whole lure into the can and then did one coat where I was hanging with the face down and I did one coat where I was hanging with the tail down so that you still sort of get equal distribution it uh, kind of works out that way in between coatings you do want to give them a quick sand a little bit and then uh, ready for the next coating wait till it completely hardens because otherwise you get soft spots and it also means that yeah uh, epoxy will not um, stick on very well so this one's uh, about to go into the epoxy, so we'll mix some uh, two component epoxy up and uh, it's ready to go. Uh, so for the epoxy coating, we're gonna use Envirotex Light. It's a uh, two component epoxy, dries up nice uh, and clear. Um, it is a little bit expensive and it's also pretty sensitive to the ratio. It has to be uh, one on one by volume uh, very exact otherwise it doesn't harden up as well um, that's why we got the syringes to measure everything out and um, we'll go from there we'll be doing uh, two, only two coats of epoxy because it dries up nice and thick so that's all we're gonna need so I've just started putting on the first epoxy layer as you can see, it already makes a world of difference. It looks really nice. Obviously, that coat's going to be a bit thicker and um, more equal. I've only done the head for now, so but we'll see um, how it looks after the first coat. The epoxy is just dried. Um, it's not fully hardened out yet, but it's dry enough to hold clearly. Um, this is what the lure looks like with the first epoxy coat on so looks very good looks very uh, nice and glossy I must say it looks professional now we're gonna do another coat but you know it's gonna be looking fairly similar we'll be we'll be sanding this coat and then we'll be um, applying another one we won't be sanding that one and then um, should be ready to fish so the way that I <coughs> Um, weight that this lure by the way is um, that it doesn't sink but that only the tip of the nose is floating it sits um, very vertically in the water like this 
and the eyes are just on the water of the lure so um, it's very well balanced that's without the hooks now in the salt water the salt water has higher density so it's it floats more but we also have to add hooks so it probably comes down to it being a either a, a suspending lure or very slowly sinking i think with uh, heavy fluorocarbon on it will be uh, sinking very slowly but uh that's perfect for what we want so anyways thanks for watching guys i hope uh those are a couple of handy tips on making your own stick bait and if you've got any questions as always uh, please leave them down in the comments we answer all of them or send us a message cheers